topic. Um, uh, what is my, okay? Ministry outside the walls. <laughs> Ministry outside the walls. How I many you know? Y'all be seated. Be seated. Have a seat. Come on. Ministry outside the walls. And I know y'all wondering where are we going with this. Um, I found out there are different ways we can minister, as I said earlier. And so, as you all know, every year, I pull back. I love to preach. I love the inspirational preaching. I love the charismatic preaching. But sometimes I pull back so we can hear or dissect uh, the word of God through testament or through an experience of someone else. I want you all to help me welcome this lovely couple that is a part of this house, that is a part of this ministry. I want you to help me welcome Deacon Von Shepherd along with his lovely wife, Sister Amber Shepherd, to the platform on today. Come on. Come on, y'all. Let me hear that. These are ours. Come on. Amen. Sister Amber, you just have a seat there. Glory to God. Come on, let's welcome the shepherds to the house. Come on, on the platform. Amen. I, amen. We want to welcome and thank God for them being here. Y'all, be, come on, let's sit down. Let's talk. Glory to God. Y'all, y'all don't have to worry about me running across the room today. <laughs> amen. I, I, I often, uh, I, I, <laughs> I often sit back because I want people to realize church is not all about the running and jumping and all of that, you know, and we know we do it because we're charismatic church, but sometimes we have to step back and just let other people testimony marinate in our spirit. Um, for those of you that are part of this church or been around this church for a while, you all realize that at one time, um, um, at one time you saw Sister Amber around here, and she was she was with child. Thank you, ladies. See, Amen. Hallelujah. She was with child, and somebody may have been wondering, you know. What? I thought she was pregnant. What, what happened? And though we heard of her, I think she posted a little bit on, on social media, her testimony, but uh, there was silence. And so today, I want to come and break the silence. I want to break the silence of what really took place in her life and, and Deacon Shepherd's life what what happened during this process of life that I would not have imagined trying to do? I'm just going to keep it real. Lord, I thank you for letting me minister inspirational and didactically. But this one right here, God, I know that you ain't called me to do this one. And so welcome, Sister Amber and thank Brother you. Shepherd. Welcome to the Welcome to the to the panel on today and we're so grateful to have you all today amen we're, we're grateful to have you today so um, um, what I want to do I want to start off with this um, there is a word or a there is a not just a word there is something that go on called surrogacy in other word um, first of all how y'all doing Doing good. Okay. Doing good. Okay. All right. Amen. Y'all want to say something to the crowd before I, I get started? Because you know, once I go, I'm rolling. Roll on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so the hands that roll on. That's, that's my type of talk. Let's roll. Amen. We, we're going to let grass grow up under. We're rolling. Uh, so, uh, Sister Amber, I, I want to I wanna talk about that. I want to discuss this thing called surrogacy and um can you explain what that is um to us please so there are different forms of surrogacy the uh, form that i we chose to venture down was traditional surrogacy and basically i was just a gestational carrier for 
um, a couple. Um, I just carried their embryo. Um, I wasn't genetically related to the baby um, in no shape or fashion. She was of their genetic makeup, um, and that was the route that we chose. There are other forms where you could um, you could be the, the egg donor in the situation and um, be inseminated, um, but we didn't choose that one. We just wanted to do just a just the carrying of the of the embryo and the baby. Oh wow! So, um, so let's jump right in because I can't, I can't, I can't wait to hear y'all <laughs> testimony. Um, so, Amber, where where did this come from? What 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 made you want to do do this level of ministry? Yeah, yeah, ministry. This started a long time ago. Okay. Um, if anybody knows my family, they know that we have some off-topic conversations over dinner and breakfast, and we were all talking about surrogacy at one point, and me and Squirt had a sidebar conversation about it, and I was like, you know, I think that's... You can hear we're not going to start today. <laughs> I was talking to my husband, and um, we did, I said, you know, that's something I think I'd like to do, and I think I was about six or eight months postpartum with my first uh, daughter and he was like really and I said yeah I think that's something I, I really like to do he's like well you handle pregnancy like a champ so just go and do it if that's what you want to do and I was like all right I was, I was like are you serious do I have your blessing he's like well let's finish making our family first and then we can talk about it and years went on and we really didn't talk about it um, and then after we had our second daughter then he brought it back up and he was just like you know you know, are you going to do this? And I kind of was like, I don't think this is the right time. But then I reached out to an agency, and of course they were like, this is not the right time. You know, you're still very new on postpartum, so just kind of sidebar and come back to us later. And then a couple of years went by, and I kind of went through a little lull in life. You know, I'm over 30, and I'm thinking, what have I accomplished? What have I done? You know, and he was the one that brought it back up again. He said, babe, get your goals back out. What is it that you want to accomplish in life? And he was like, you always said you wanted to do surrogacy. Why don't you, why don't you do that? And I was like, I guess I could. And I reached out to an agency, and then they denied me because they didn't like the birth weights of my babies. Um, and so I felt deflated. And I was like, they were like, but we still think you're a strong candidate for surrogacy. You should still pursue it. Um, we can get you in contact with the company. And I was just like, no, nah, I don't want to do it. So I, I sulked for probably two months, and then he was like, get back after it, contact these people, just pursue it and see what happens. And from that point on, it just hit the ground running from that moment. So, so uh, actually, this was not, this was not just a pop-up thing. So no. why, why, why you wanted to do it, though? I mean, that's... I don't know. Because, you know, we don't... I, I know. No, nobody I know has done it. I don't say it like that. Um, okay, you but, know. you know, I don't really, it was just, pregnancy was just so beautiful to me. And it was just such a, it was, yes, it was a challenge, but it was just something that I really enjoyed doing. And then once I had second baby, I was like, gosh, you know, this is just, this is just so beautiful. And just, it's a moment, you know, you just, it was a magical moment. And I just, I thought, man, I, I wish I could do this for somebody that can't have that moment. I want to be able to help somebody in that way. So, uh, dealing with, because I'm trying to think, you know, this was not something that just came up. You just had a desire. You just had a desire for, to help someone. So your desire was to help somebody that oh, yeah. wasn't possible of, yes. of, of birthing a kid mm -hmm. or, or what, or do you have more details on? I mean, it was really, yes, it was to help create families. And, you know, you see infertility around you and you wish that you, you, you pray that, you know, Lord, let them be able to make a family, let them be able to have that experience. And for some people, it just doesn't happen. And so, you know, I wanted to be able to be the vehicle by which somebody could build that family. So, yeah, it was it was definitely a desire. And then it just felt like the more we talked about it, the more I was feeling led, and, you know, to do it. And it just kind of propelled me from there, you know, and I just really was had to seek God about it for a little while. Um, and it just kept coming back up and kept coming back up. And then when he was saying, he was just like, babe, this is something I, I really think you should do. You know, he just felt so strong about it. And he kind of was 
pushing me because I, I didn't want to step outside the box. I was just like, that's, that's kind of far out. You know, even though I have this desire, putting it into action was really hard because I'm one of those ones. I need all the details. I need to know A, B, C, and how we get to D, you know. And so um, it just was very unfamiliar because nobody around me was doing that. And so I was like, I don't have anybody to lean on, but he was like, just go for it. Just go for it. Yeah, nobody around me has <laughs> done it either. And so, so, so I'm, I'm, I'm coming to you, Deacon, because I know you. Deacon, you, you come home. You're putting up your fishing tools and all of that. Where in the world did you get from? Because <laughs> I'm trying to think, man, I mean, we've had our own kids. We've had our own children. I'm done. You know, I even told my wife, hey, we, you ain't getting pregnant no more. <laughs> so from a husband perspective, what, what made you want to, I mean. Well, uh, this is probably going to come to a surprise to a lot of you. Uh, when it comes to pregnancy, like, I love it. Like, I, when we had our first baby, it was magical. Uh, of course, when we had our first baby, it was, you know, unexpected. It was magical, man. It was a good feeling. But, uh, you know, in, with her in that delivery room, in that moment, I embraced it. And I loved it. So pregnancy to me is a beautiful thing, and I embraced that. Uh, so when we had our second baby, you know, and the way we planned that out, it was, it was just awesome. So when we came, uh, talked about the surrogacy, uh, me, I'm just, I just love blessing people in general, Okay. Uh, I can go to a restaurant, and a drive through and pay for the next two cars behind me just because. That's just me. Okay? So, and I think this surrogacy journey uh, was more on the line of being impactful to someone else's life, being a blessing to someone else's life, uh, and me pushing her out there to do that. Because if you know my wife, uh, she's more of an introvert. So she's more of, you know, I, I don't want to try new things or I don't, you know, she will, but you really have to push her. Uh, I'm a coach, so um, I, I'm, I'm used pusher. to pushing people. So, uh, but I pushed her out to do that because I th I thought it would be good for her, it'd be good for our family, and it'd be a blessing to our family and the uh, whoever we were going to uh, bless uh, in that moment. So, uh, me pushing her through this and, uh, and allowing her to get out there to be comfortable with herself to uh, you know put her body out there, sacrifice her body uh, for uh, two other people. Uh, that's a big thing for a husband, you know, and I ha came across some people, man, I don't see how you can let, you know, your, your wife do that, man. I can let my wife do that. I said, well, that's not why she's not your wife. She's mine, you know. <laughs> so, uh, but, yeah, so, and, and like I said, you know, pushing her out to do that, uh, I just, I just thought it would just be a blessing to whoever we we're going to bless. We didn't know who we were going to, uh, be matched with or who we were going to, uh, uh, connect with so whoever we were going to connect with we know God was in it all because we prayed for this uh, before we even made a decision we went to prayer we fasted uh, we talked we connected you know this is long before we even made the decision to do this uh, and I enjoy and enjoy those moments I always enjoy our moments when we pray together in devotion and prayer but man this thing here before we did this uh, it was it was deep it was, uh, you know, we connected on another level that, uh, man, it, it's, you know, I look forward to getting up every morning to connect with her. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, but pushing her out there to uh, do this uh, big thing for somebody else, uh, it make my heart proud because uh, she's a strong woman, you know, and I meant when I said she takes things in like a champ, it's like, she pushed babies out, man. It's like she's not pushing, you know. And, but she does it well. And I think, you know, say so you can be a blessing to somebody else. If you can take your body through that twice, uh, and if you want to do that a third time, I'm 100% going to back you up. You know, so. I'm, I'm kind of like in that group that would have came to you be like, hey, but I didn't. Be like, man, I mean, your wife pregnant, but it's not you, you know. And that would have been a cycle, that's a psychological challenge for me just thinking about it, you know. But for you, the Bible said in Amos 3 and 3, can two walk except they be agreed? 
You know, this is something. So, so the thing is, because I was kind of wondering, I'm like, man, I wonder what Egan Vaughn thinking about this, you know? But it sounded like you were more forward and pushing it as much as she was. That Am I correct? Or? Yes. I, I never asked that question, uh, even on my job, you know, and uh, my colleagues were, well, how can you, you know, let your wife go through that? How, can, how do you feel like it's not your baby? Like, well, you know, like I said, I, I come across a lot of students every day at my job, you know. They're not my biological kids, you know, but I treat them like my own, you know, and I have some in here that can vouch for that. Uh, so me being a blessing to somebody else with her carrying uh, somebody else's baby, that was nothing to me. You know? That wasn't even like a big issue, you know. Uh, the, the, the important thing was that this baby come out healthy, you know, and we knew that was going to happen because God was in it, uh, you know, and that's the important thing. Uh, her carrying somebody else's baby, uh, that wasn't on my mind. What was on my mind was, hey, we have a blessing for somebody else that she's carrying. So, wow, amen. So, so yeah, I applaud you. By all means, I mean, just, just thinking about it, you know. Uh, yeah. So, uh, no, I thought about the part you say you recognize your wife as a champ when she's birthing kids, you know, because every woman body operates different. And to recognize that this is a, this is a part of, her, of a desire that she had but you're you're behind it. You're because most men would be like, no, you know, we're not. You know, uh, we're not doing that. So, Sister Amber, let let's talk about. Okay, you came to me, and I was like, you know, I'm I'm puzzled. You know, I said, so what? You know, what's gonna go on? Because I had never had no one to come in my office and say, you know, Bishop, I want to carry somebody else's baby. You know. Maybe spiritually, you know, I'm thinking, oh, yes, Lord, I'll lay hands on you. Go and do it. But, but there wasn't none of that. She said, Bishop, I said, are you serious? Do you remember that day? Oh, yeah. I caught you off guard with that one. Yeah, you did. Um, I didn't tell him what I was meeting him about. And I just walked in and was like, okay, this is what, this is what we feel led to do. We prayed about it. And um, this is where we, where we feel God is calling us to go. And, of course, you know, I want to, as my covering, Praise I want to make sure that, you know, I don't bring shame to the church or I'm not doing something mm -hmm. that you wouldn't agree with. Um, and so that's why I brought it to you wow. for us to discuss. But, yeah, you were definitely caught off guard because I'm sure that came out of nowhere for you. It did. Um, yeah. But, you know, we didn't take it lightly. It yeah. wasn't, you know, like Deacon said, it wasn't a, a light decision. It was something that we had really sought God about and felt led and um, led to do. So we definitely wanted to, that was the next step was to come to you and make yeah. sure that, we were we were doing something that would you wouldn't disagree with. And let me let me pause for a moment to applaud that, you know, because yes, come on. Because there were t there there were times when people got it, their leadership involved with decisions that they make. If people wanted to buy a car, they would you know they would contact their leadership. Hey, I'm looking at this car, you know, or I'm looking at this house and things. And so I applaud. This is a because you knew this was a very, very serious thing. And when you came to my office, I was more concerned about, I wasn't concerned about you caring. I was more concerned about, because y'all know I'm an advocate for mental uh, health. And so I was more concerned about, okay, Sister Hammer, you're going to be careful. I said, I, I said, you, you know, how are you thinking about, you know, I was thinking about the process of you going through it and the mental challenge because the ideal can be good and i found out not in this case every good ideal is not a god ideal right. Right. and i learned that you know from ministry it can be a good idea but god said no don't you put that person over there you know and so a good idea is not always a god ideal but you came to me i questioned you actually i was puzzled i called lady c expeditiously i was like <laughs> I said, you can't believe in me, not just Amber. Because <laughs> I tell her, I say, hey, I got to meet with Sister Amber this afternoon, blah, blah, you know. And, and, and you know, it wasn't, normally she would ask me, you know, what was the meeting about? <laughs> I call her. I'm like, this, 
I just, you know, I said, I said, this got to, and I looked at you that day, and I said, Sister Amber, I said, this is not just you doing something physically. I said, this is ministry. I said, don't know, I said, I'm looking at it as ministry. You're, you're helping a family that can't help themselves. I said, this is ministry. You're sacrificing your body, as Jesus did, to help somebody to have a story, a testimony. So it's a good idea. But I want to talk about the process. So after we... Sister so Amber, I ain't asked you yet. No, I, just, I, just, I, just, I thought that was the end. I'm sorry. I'm jumping ahead. Okay. You rolling for roll real. On, roll you on, roll on. <laughs> <laughs> Good. She, okay but I want to talk about the process and I want you to give us the, the details from the moment you decided okay after you met with me after you met with your family after everything is you've done all your meetings now it's time to make the rope you know put things into action let's go from there so after we got in contact with the company. Um, they built my profile to send out to agencies to, to work with. Um, and they were like, well, you can expect a few days on a response from agencies and they'll give you offers based on your profile. We had an offer, we had three offers back within a day. Um, and they were all very good offers. Um, but of course, us being really new to surrogacy, we didn't know who these agencies were. We didn't know which one to pick. I, I think I called you and I was like, Bishop, be in prayer with us because we got to make a decision. Um, they want us to take some time to think about it and think it through, do our research. And um, he and I, we prayed about it. And um, after a couple of days, we felt led to go with um, an agency. And it wasn't even the, the, the highest offer, um, but we just felt really led to go with this agency. And so that's the one we chose. We got connected with an intake coordinator after we made the decision. And we got on Zoom calls, and they started. They built the profile for us, and it was next on to matching with intended parents, um, and then doing our background checks and credit checks and all of that stuff. Um, and once all that came back clean, and then we got con connected, and um, they said we we've only got based on your surrogacy profile requirements, which I, you know, as a surrogate, as a new surrogate, I didn't really know. Um, and I'll say this that. You should know what you will and will not accept as a surrogate. And one of the things that I did not want was a termination of a pregnancy. Um, and I would not allow them to reduce the pregnancy either. So if I got pregnant with multiple babies, they, could, they didn't have the option to reduce. And I also wanted the embryos to be genetically tested for abnormalities. Um, those were my requirements. And based on those requirements, we only could match with this one couple. Um, and so they were like, well, do you want to meet them? And I was like, well, let me send their profile over. And I looked at it and I said, yeah, I'd like to meet them. Um, and they sent my profile over and immediately they got back and said they would like to meet with you. And so that was the next step. And then I got nervous. I was like, oh, this is really happening. We're getting ready to meet people. And I remember, get, you know, we were getting prepared. It was like days leading up to it. We had a Saturday Zoom call with them set. And um, our ink intake coordinator sent over a list of do's and don'ts and some of those don'ts were conversations to kind of stay away from and um, so I was like over there preparing myself mentally and over here trying to coach him I'm like hey you know when we get on this call sit up straight make sure you're using proper grammar like we don't want to come off the sound of country you know I was sweating bullets this man said babe they're gonna have to just get to know me I, I'm, I'm gonna be me I'm not gonna be nobody else but me and I was like, well, do you? I'm still going to use proper grammar. And I sat up straight. I mean, back was straight. I was sweating. But we got on the call, and it was almost like we just knew them. I mean, immediately we started talking. And our intake corner, he was there to ask questions, keep conversation going. But he didn't have to say anything. I, I forgot he was even on the call because, I mean, we just hit it off, and we started talking. And they got to know us, and we got to know them. And I teased my husband because I said, well, him and, the, him and Mike, which is the dad, I said they had a bromance going on because they just, I mean, they monopolized the conversation. I was like, wait a minute, it's about me. Hello, I'm over here. But, um, but they just hit it off, and I mean, we all just connected and cried. I mean, we were just so excited, and we got off the call, and our intake coordinator reached out and said, you don't have to make a decision right away. You know, you can think about this. you got time. 
Um, but he said, I thought the call went really well. Just let us know what you think. And immediately we responded back with, it's a match for us if it's a match for them. Before we could even get the email sent off, we got an email saying they want to match with you all. And, I mean, that was the best feeling. And we connected. We changed numbers. And we talked. And we've been talking ever since. And from that point on, it was then it was legal time, which was contracts. Um, and they had to hire counsel for me. And um, I met with the attorney. And she asked some questions. She asked some tough questions. I was like, oh, this is getting intense. Um, she was going through all of my stuff and, you know, she was dissecting, do we have wills in place? Do, what was, what, what did we have established? And I was like, I don't really think we're as prepared as I thought we should have been. But, um, she was like, that's okay. We'll get you prepared. And, um, she was, the next part was getting the contract and they sent over this 70 page document and said, okay, go through it, make notes and tell us what you think. And I was thinking, I've never read a contract, but. You know, once again, I had to seek the Lord, and I sat down one weekend, we went through it, and we made changes, and, and um, you know, and just made notes and gave it back, and they were like, we weren't expecting you to be this thorough about it, but right. I'm detailed in that, in that regard, and anybody that knows me can tell yes, you that I'm asking yes, all, <laughs> I'm asking all the questions, and so we got it back, and um, at first, it, I thought, I thought this was the process was going to end there because they put in the contract that they did want the option to um, terminate or reduce and I thought well here it is we're at the end of the road because they wanted the they wanted that but then to come to find out their attorney had kind of slipped that in on them and they didn't want that so once they got that edited and moved out of there um, we were good to go and it was a match and then I was next step was going to New York to go to the fertility clinic to be seen by their fertility doctor and um, you know, and I think she had some skepticism just based on my medical file and with everything. She was just kind of like, um, I'm not really sure how it's going to work out for you, but just, you know, come to New York. We'll look you over and examine you and everything. And when I got there, she was surprised and she thought, wow, you're really healthy and in shape and this is going to be good. And they cleared me. Um, so we got medical clearance and we travel. I traveled to New, uh, Nashville um, to go and be uh, examined there as well to start our med cycle, and so that was injections daily. Um, and then Coach Shepard turned into Doctor Shepard um, at that so, point. So, so that that's <laughs> that's where I want to go because now the process because it's a good idea. It's a good thing that okay, I want to do this. Now the process is demanding. Oh yeah. Yep. It's demanding. You said you had to travel. Mm -hmm. You said you had to uh, go through a credit report. Yep. Mm -hmm. They check your credit. They check your credit. Good Jesus. They want to make sure you're not doing it for the wrong intentions. For the wrong intentions. Yep. Okay. Yep. And so now, so, so uh, Deacon, how do you get prepared with your colloquialism languages <laughs> and things? <laughs> you said they just going to have to get to know me. <laughs> Listen, you know me. Everybody know me. Uh, she definitely knows me. Well, you need to get prepared for this. Like, for what? <laughs> you know? So I just like going with the flow, you know, and sometimes I do need to prepare myself for certain things just to stay uh, on track. But something like this, you know, it's like, you know, why prepare yourself for, uh, you know, to meet somebody? Uh, you, you know, it's like, it's not, I, I'd say it's not genius. I'd rather for them to, uh, you know, meet me, you know, and not a scripted me, you know, just meet me. And so, so, and, the, and that's, and that's just the way I roll. You know, I feel if I just give myself uh, and be myself, you know, it's better that way because you don't have to worry about the nerves. You don't have to worry about, oh, am I saying this? What am I saying that? Hey, I'm going to say what I say, you know, whether you take it, you know, a certain way or not, you know, I'm saying, and everything worked out. You know, and so, uh, and yes, you know, I'm a realist. So, in every everything worked out for us. We had the meeting. We did the Zoom call. And like she said, we connected. We clicked. Uh, it was great, man. Um, and I don't think they said many words. Like I said, me and the husband, uh, we were just going back and forth and just talking. They talked you know? the entire time. And, uh, and like she said, our intake coordinator, he was the mediator. He was just sitting there just like, oh. What am I here for? You know, so uh, it was great. Uh, but to prepare myself for something like that, it's just all about just, you know, just being myself and, you know. Uh, not, I feel like I had a different perspective on it because yeah. it almost felt like an interview to me. I'm right. carrying somebody's life. You know what I mean? I'm right. carrying somebody's child. So it almost to me felt like, 
you know, I needed to put forth my best presentation of me. You know what I mean? So they get to know that this is who Ember is and this is what she's about. Not that I don't want to be real, but at the same time, I didn't want to come off as being um, unprepared or that um, that I was taking this lightly because this, this indeed was a serious matter. And so I'm the one that's going through yeah. all of this, and so I have a different perspective. He can be cool as a yeah. cucumber and roll with the flow and all that stuff. And, and I don't have that luxury. <laughs> and don't miss you. Don't get, like, I agree with that. Yeah. You know, I agree with everything she says. I agree with everything. You know, she's right, you know, but I just have my way of doing things and she have her way of doing mm -hmm. things, but it works out. Yeah. You know, that's just like with us as a couple, a marriage couple. We've been married for, it'll be 14 years in July. Mm -hmm. You know, so it works out. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and we just balance each other out, you know. That's the way I prepare myself. She prepare right. herself well, for certain way. And I think way. that's yeah. why they monopolize the, the phone yeah. conversation is because they were both rolling with the flow. Yeah. And me and Ashley, which is the mom, we were the ones over there, a bag of nerves, because we want this to go well. We want to connect. We want to move forward. And we there's a lot hanging on this, on well, this interaction. Well, you, you know, know, men, that's how we roll. That's how y'all roll. You know, we... We be like, come on, let's do this. Hey, man, ain't no need to. You. We, you got us this far. Let's take care of this. We got this down pat. Come on, we having a baby. <laughs> we having a baby. Come on. But I, I wanted to just being that we're in the presence of church, I want to show you where you all fit in in the statistics of what you all did. How many marriage couples in here are willing to go through the process of surrogacy? Come on, with a show of hands. Married couples that are in the building. So, you wait a minute. Nobody? Jesus. So that lets us know that you all are one of the whatever, how many, 20, <laughs> you know, so that's ministry. That's saying I'm willing to do something that nobody else is willing to do. I'm willing to do, and that doesn't make us bad people because my hand didn't go up. <laughs> 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 that doesn't make us bad people, but we're saying to you, my, that's something different. You're, you're awesome. <laughs> Come on, you're awesome because we're not willing to put our life on pause for, for something like this, but you looked at his ministry. So, Sister Amber, I, I kind of pause you because you said he became Dr. Shepherd. Yeah, he became Dr. Shepherd. We had that joke in our house, you know, because every night, you know, I had to take, well, it was Tuesdays and Wednesdays, and then I took an injection on Mondays and Wednesdays. Um, so there were two on Tuesdays and no, Tuesdays and Thursdays, and then um, one on Monday and Wednesday. So almost every night, I mean, I was taking yeah. injections, and he would he would I, be the one to do it. I think we I think we have a photo of of different um, mm -hmm. um, needles and process. Uh, media team, help us out. I think we have a, where um, there are some needles. I think, Amen. That you had to take all the, mm -hmm. um, you had to go through all of these injections yep. and things of that nature. So. And that was just one round because that we actually went through two rounds of injections. So, yep. See, y'all be scared of one needle. <laughs> and I was, I'm terrified. I don't like needles at all. And I mean, I, that was something I had to brave um, to get started. And I thought, gosh, I really don't want to do the injections, but I didn't want to do oral meds either. I didn't want to have to keep up with all of that. So there he was, you know, giving me my injections. Hope y'all was praying for me. <laughs> I, I put them through it. I ain't, I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> so so I, I'm looking at this picture. Y'all see this? Mm -hmm. I'm looking at this and I'm saying, no way. Mm -hmm. You know, there, I mean, maybe a two needles, <laughs> but I'm seeing over 20 needles, mm -hmm. over 20 needles. Yep. It was 10 weeks total of needles on our second, when, after we got pregnant on the second try. It was 10, 10 wow. weeks of injections. So, I, I, I saw you slide that in there, and I'm, and I'm going to read the statistics. In 2020, the CDC, amen, uh, nationwide, uh, they used the assist that reproduction res results 
in over 75,000 lives through segregation. And the demand are the rising among intended parents, about 2% of all births in the country result uh, from ART. While these success are very promising, we understand that growing a family is an emotional experience. And, we, and you want to give yourself the best possible chance of having your own child, but that's why the importance of surrogacy has come into place. Now, I'm just going to read something. Uh, in the United States, the success rate for healthy birth is as high as 75%. Healthy births is set over 75%. So the reason I wanted to read that, Sister Amber, is because you found yourself in the first try among the negative percentage. Let's talk about that. And it, as as much as you want, you desire. Amen. We don't want to. Um, with the first one, it definitely was a lot of emotions because we went into we went to New York full of faith that this thing was going to work out. The Lord was going to do it, you know. And the parents were just kind of like, "Well, if it happens, you know, that'd be great." And we were like, "Oh no, we believe in and trusting in God. This is going to happen. He's just going to do it. We just feel it, you know." And we were so excited, and we had the transfer, and we came home. And I remember before we even made it back to St. Louis, um, we touched down in Atlanta. I turned to him on the plane. I said. I'm pregnant. I just feel it. I know it. I'm pregnant. And uh, we got home and I started having even more pregnancy symptoms. And I thought, oh, the Lord is doing it. He just, this is happening. And as quickly as I was feeling that, um, they started to subside as well. And I was taking tests around the clock and they got more faint, more faint. So we had lost that embryo and I was devastated. Um, that was my first taste of pregnancy loss. I had never experienced that, and it wasn't even mine to be, you know, sad about, but I was devastated. I was crushed because I thought, I just really thought this was it. And I felt, you know, a sense of pressure because here I am trying to do this for somebody else, and I couldn't do it. I wasn't, I wasn't successful. You know, I felt a sense of guilt about it. And he had to give me time to kind of grieve. And, you know, he took care of the girls in the house for me and let me kind of rest my mind and rest my body because I was really going through all the emotions of, of losing a pregnancy. And the parents were encouraged. And they were like, it's okay. We, you know, this stuff happens. We understand. But I couldn't accept it, you know. And it, it was very hurtful. And then finally I just had to give it to God and say, okay, Lord, you know, it, it didn't work this time. You know, lead me on if we should do this again. You know, and um, you know, they came back and they said, when you're ready, you know, only if you're ready. And if you're not, we understand. Um, but they were like, when you're ready, we'd like to try again. And so they came and approached us and we um, and I, we prayed about it. And I said, Lord, are we ready to move forward again with this thing? And husband was like, babe, I think we ought to go forward with this. We already, we're already here. We're, we're not going to stop now. And so we decided to move forward with the, another transfer. So, so Deacon. My goodness, Sister Amber. <laughs> so, Deacon, you you you're you're confident. You have faith in God. You're quoting scriptures, and everything's going well. You just know God's going to do this. Your wife tell you the bait. It did. How would we say the embryo? Or, embryo. Or the embryo didn't work. It didn't happen. The production. It did. What effect did that have on you as a man? Well. Um, when, when, she, when we found out the embryo didn't take, uh, she was devastated. So it was, I was more of being a comforter. I had to console her, you know, pray for her. Uh, it, it hurt me, too, because I know, you know how much she wants to do this for this family. Uh, but me, as the man of the house, uh, I always had to protect my family, look over my family, cover my family. So in that moment, uh, in that moment, uh, I just had to just take control, uh, give her her space, uh, because mental health is like big to me too. And I and I tell uh, my players that all the time: if your mental health is not good, why are you doing this? You know, so you have to have your mental health intact. So I had to give her her space, pray over her, uh, you know, be there for her, you know, take care of the kids, uh, and just you know, until she was ready to. Uh, you know, you know, come back and just you know be Amber again because it, it was it was uh, devastating for her, devastating for the whole family, but definitely devastating for her. 
because she felt like a failure, you know, and we thought, hey, this thing's going to, hey, going to take, it's going to, bam, 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 we're good. But it didn't happen that way. Uh, I'm pretty uh, strong mentally, you know, I think. And in that moment, I had to be strong for her. Uh, and thank God that we know the Lord. We know God. We, we know who our uh, Savior is. We know who our protector is. So if we didn't have that, I mean, there's no telling what would have happened in that moment. Uh, if we weren't together and she was a single mom uh, with two kids, there's no telling what would have happened in that moment. But, and this is why uh, your support team is so important uh, when dealing with something like this, uh, with this surrogacy, because you need a support team. You know, not just me, you know, we have her mom, you know, her grandma, my parents. I mean, we need a whole support team for, uh, through this whole process. And, you know, and some people are not going to, you know, uh, you know, be for it at first. But, you know, uh, all of that fall in place, you know. And in that moment when she uh, lost the embryo, uh, I knew I had to step up and be the man that God called me to be for my family. So, um, you know, yes, I was hurt. Yes, I was devastated as well, but you know it wasn't going to help our family if both of us are soaking. You right. Know, so, so, so you 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 jumped that you put the word out there, and I'm glad that God orchestrated this interview or panel discussion on in this season because most for those of you that don't mental health is we're operating in that month where mental health takes mental illness takes over the, um, the life of people. More suicides are committed in April than any month of the year. Successful suicides because uh, they've tried it, they've been depressed um, and all of that throughout the year, but the successful attempts are mainly in April. But thank God we didn't have to deal with that. But uh, Sister Amber, but that had to be a dark side to all of this, you know, being that you're, you lost, you, you got connected. See, and, I, and that's the thing about it. You just, the embryo part is you are, this is where I disagree with abortion because there is already a life in process. There's already a connection taking place and this was a disconnect. So let's tap into the mental part with Amber. Not Sister Amber, not Mom Amber, not her, my wife Amber, but where was Amber at in that moment? Um, she was deflated. She was hurt, you know. She was just very disappointed because it just felt like like I had failed them, you know. And and I'm one of those, you know, I, I like to rise to a challenge. You know, if I'm challenged, I'm, I want to rise. And, and it felt like I had lost lost something and to, to go through the, you know, go through the feeling the pregnancy and knowing that I was pregnant and then to, in a, just a split seemed like just happened so fast to knowing that I wasn't, I didn't even, I didn't have time to adjust mentally and emotionally. And that was, that was really tough. And I just, whenever I get like, when I get sad or whenever I get down, I need time and that's how I recharge is time away. I need isolation. Um, and I needed time away from people and things and obligations. And I had to, um, I was doing nails at the time. I had to cancel appointments. And I couldn't even talk to my friends in that time. You know, it just seemed like nobody could understand. And so I needed time. I remember one, one evening, he took the girls to a ball game. And I sat in the house and I watched a movie and ate pizza on the couch. Because that's the time that I needed to just be by myself. I needed time to meditate. I needed time to just be relaxed. Um, and that's how I re recharge and refocus. And in that time, you know, of just having evenings and, you know, my own isolated time, I was able to recharge and get back up, you know, and stand back up and say, okay, you can do this, girl. You can do this. Stand up. You know, this was, this was a knockdown, but you can get back up and you're going to dust your shoulders off and, and you can do this again. So... And then I just felt really led that this wasn't it. This wasn't the end of our story. This, it wasn't meant to end that way. Um, and then I had to take that as, and I remember you saying something, you know, about it being a testimony. This is your why, you know. Now I have a, a taste of what they've had to go through all these years of trying and all the, the losses they, they had to experience over the years. I've never had to experience that. I mean, Hope you, 
five years they were trying. Five years. Five years. years. Yeah. Wow. Five years they have been trying. So I never had to experience that or go through that, thank God. But to go through that for somebody else, it was it was a whole different experience for me. But um, but the Lord equipped me to stand back up and to dust my shoulders off, and that's what I did. Wow. So so now looking at that, when someone tells you, say, say for instance, a young lady come, well, we know there's none in this crowd, but somebody say, hey, I want to do surrogacy. I want, I want to do, would you prepare them more on the physical side, or would you prepare them more on the mental side? I think you have, it's almost equal. You okay. have to, you know, you have physically... You are undergoing a lot through the medications, through just the commitment of it and the sacrifice of pregnancy after you get pregnant, but the mental too because um, all of these injections, they're hormones, and so they, they do cause some mental effects, you know. It does put a strain on your mental wellness, you know. I, got, I was very moody, very just, you know, it was like... There were some days I didn't even want him to look at me. I was like, don't even come in this room. I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> and I'm just being honest. I mean, you know, your emotions are heightened or, you know, the next minute I was crying. I'm like, come here, give me a hug. You know, it just felt like the, the sky was falling. You know, it was just, you went through it. So there were days where I would cry. I mean, and it would be nothing wrong. I mean, but I would cry because I was just, you know, hormonally, you're just, you're going through a lot, you know, putting your body through a lot. So there's a physical strength. Strain, but there's a mental strain that comes along with the physical strain. So, so we know about postpartum depression. We know about that. So you're going through it now in the process of pregnancy. Mm -hmm. You're going through a state of depression. Yep. Because because one day he Hercules and the other day he's unHercules. He Junebug. Junebug. <laughs> Junebug. I don't want to see Junebug. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> get away from me, bug. Yep. <laughs> you want to throw spray some raid on yep. him? Come on. Come on. I, so, so I go play with my fishing pole. <laughs> <laughs> so, Deacon, you seeing this? You know, like one day, hug me. Now, get away from me. Come on, rub my feet. Come on, be be husband to me. Then next moment, get out of here. Yep. June, but I mean. <laughs> so, what did that do to you? Cause now. Now, what watch this? Now, this having an effect mentally on your marriage. You know, it's ministry, but now it's having an effect on your marriage. So, from a male perspective, man's side of that, how, how's this? Because, you're, you know, you you thinking at work, man. Well, I can't wait till I get home, see my, you know, see my queen, blah blah blah. And then you get home, you get locked out. Let's talk about that for a minute. You got so, one minute. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's tough. All right. Uh, her going through those mood swings uh, when she did, <laughs> it was literally just like that. Like, it's, you know, she's like, I don't know. She's crying. And, I don't know. I just need to. I said, well, what do you want me to do? Babe, what do I need to do for you? I don't know. Just, you know, leave. So, and it's like, okay. And, and as a husband, it's like, I'm supposed to be here to, you know, when you're down, I'm supposed to be here to pick you up. Now you don't even want me in the room with you, mm -hmm. you know. And so uh, I left, you know, but <laughs> I didn't leave out the house. <laughs> I didn't leave out the house. I stayed close by. Uh, but I left, you know, I prayed for, you know. I'm man, it was a lot of praying, uh, a lot of praying uh, because I know she was going through mentally. You know, I know she was going through, uh, you know, some things, and uh, she didn't want to see me in that moment. So I know if she didn't want to see me, she didn't want to see anybody. You know, I hope she didn't want to see anybody. You know, I'm just but she, Nobody. But no, she didn't want to see anybody. So in that moment, I, I stay away, give her her space. I, uh, you know, and I'm thinking, like, and you can't take it personal. You can't take it personal because, you know, you know it's not you know your uh, your spouse. You know you know it's not her. You know it's all the medicine, all the uh, you know the hormones. You know it's it's messing with the mind. So you can't take it personal. So what I did, I got away. You know, gave her her space. You know, continue to pray for her. Uh, and then there was moments in the same day. I just need you to hold me. <laughs> I just need you to hold me. 
okay, whatever I need to do, right? And just roll with the flow, man. You know, and it's like I'm there. I hold her. Hey, you need anything else? What you need me to do? You know, just hold me. You know, pray with her, hold her. You know, and <laughs> next couple of days or so, it might be something different. You know, so uh, as a husband in that moment, you know, you just have to have patience. You know, and before I got with my wife, and before uh, you know, we became you know one. Man, I was a I was a very impatient man. Like my patience was real thin. And over the years, it built. You know, being in education allowed me to have patience. And God was working on me before all this, and. And now, you know, going through this with her, man, I'm telling you, patience, man. It got me through because, you know, I, you know, with me not having patience, if I was, my patience was short, I mean, I would probably, I don't know what I would have done. But uh, I'm a very patient man. Uh, and I tell people all the time, uh, and I know this is this is random, but, you know, somebody would tell me, well, you know, we'll, we'll be with you in a minute. I'm good. I'm patient, you know. And so in that moment, I was patient with her uh, every time, just patient. I couldn't take it personally and be like, well, she don't want me in the room with her. Uh, so was, I just, I'm going to get in my car, wash my car, and do whatever I need to do and leave her wherever she, you know. I couldn't think like that. Because if I did that, I know I would have had to hear from her anyway. I would have called you. So, uh, but no, I had to be patient. Uh, I stayed under the same roof as her. I never left her. Uh, but I let her have a moment. And uh, I knew later on that day, a few hours, however long it took, uh, I had to go in there and console her as well. I had to go in there and be, you know, husband, be booby, be square, be, you know. <laughs> lovey. Lovey. Couldn't be Junebug. I, I couldn't, couldn't be, be Junebug. Junebug. I had to go in there and do what I was supposed to do. Uh, and it came eventually. And, uh, and I was just there. Whatever she needed, I was there for her. If she needed me to get out the room, get out. I don't want to talk. I don't want to see anybody. I was out. Okay. She needed me to come in there, get the solar, do whatever, rub her feet, whatever, fix her something to eat. I was there, you know. So, uh, and and you know, we had kids. So, you know, in that process, hey, I go spend time with the kids. You know, they most of the time they're doing their own thing anyway. Uh, and sometimes we just did things for her, you know, just to make her feel, hey, you know, we're still here for you. We still we still got your back. You know, through this whole process, you know, at the end of the day, we're your number one fan. You know, we, we are the one here for you cheering your own through this. So uh, you just have to roll with the flow, man. When the same oh, thing, you have to have patience. Wow. Yeah. So so, so I'm, you mentioned the kids. So how did y'all prepare the kids for, okay, mom is pregnant? And we're like, oh, excited about it. But uh, mom going to have to release. So how, how did y'all prepare? That oh. was kind of hard because okay. they're young, so they don't really understand the whole concept of, babies and all that stuff so that was that was kind of a tricky subject but I just told you know I explained it to my oldest you know we want to bless the family and that can't you know they're having troubles having a baby um so mommy is gonna carry a baby for them and Alea was like well as long as that baby ain't coming to this house I'm good to go don't worry about me you know but Alexis, of course, she's four, and at the time she was three, she didn't understand, you know. Um, so it wasn't until, you know, that I was pregnant and there's a visible belly that she's like, hey, wait a minute, are we having a baby or what's going on? And so then I had to explain, well, this is not your baby. And it really helped when they actually got to see the parents because at first it's almost is like a figment of our imagination. We're talking about these people, but they don't know them and they hadn't seen them. And so... We got to, um, they got to come here to Missouri and see us, and it was like, okay, there's actually two people that are going to get a baby. So this all is starting to make sense now. And so once they got to meet them and become connected with them, then it really all helped to kind of put the pieces together in their minds. So, so hey, awesome. I mean, because I'm like, you know, we have to, even though we're doing ministry, our kids are doing involved with this. Yes. And, and that's what people don't understand about pastor kids is they got to go with the role of when we're gone, they're gone. We come home, they come. So I want to go back just for a minute. And I know we're running, you know, because I'm enjoying this conversation. How many of y'all enjoying it? Yeah. Amen. So, so uh, I want to go back to the mental part. What got you through that? Phase. Um, 
I, I mean, I really feel like my strength in God really is, I don't think that if I, if I wouldn't have been strong in faith and knowing that God was going to perform this miracle, because it just, you know, you just know, you know, God had already promised that this was going to happen. So it was kind of like, I already know it's going to happen. So don't give up now and don't be a quitter and don't, don't abort the mission. You know, you say that all the time and message, don't abort the mission. This, it's going to come to pass. You're going to have to stand strong. And I really feel like that's what it was. And then just having his support to continue to push me to say, babe, this is bigger than you. You got to, you're doing this for two people. You got to think about them. Um, and that really did help me to, to rise above and to, and to pull myself out of that, that dark space. Yes, sir. Come because to add to what she's talking about, you know, doing the injections, you know, she had two weeks left of injections. And she got on to the second round. On the second round, yeah, she had two weeks left. So she got to the point where she was like, hey, I don't want to do this anymore. And I, was, I didn't know how to respond to that because I knew she was, you know, she was struggling. You know, mentally she was, you know, I'm putting a needle in her every other night. And I'm like, I know that can't be fun, especially with someone who's afraid of needles. Uh, so, you know, like. So she going through all this and she doesn't like needles. At she don't all. like needles. Gosh. It's two weeks left. She don't want to do it anymore. She said, I'm done. I don't want to see another needle. Don't stick me with another needle. I'm done. So, and I'm like, well, babe, listen. So, and I just simply told her. I think the coaching came at me at this point. So listen, it's not about you, you know. It's not about you. You have to think about Mike and Ashley. It's about them. I said, we're a blessing to them. You have to think of them. This, you know, this is their baby. It's not about you. Just because you're going through right now doesn't mean that you want to block our blessings because you want to be done with blessing somebody else. So you have to go through and, and get through this. So I had to push her. Right. You know, she didn't want to, but I had to. And once we got past that point, like I say, it was a lot of praying and uh, uh, a lot of God and just me pushing her and motivating her. But I had to, like, hey, snap out of it. It's not about you. It's about them. You know, we're here for them. So, and I said it in a loving way, but I had to be firm. You know, <laughs> the and, coach really did yes. come out of him. But at that point, I was eight weeks along, eight weeks into injections on the second time. And I just... Physically, I was so sick. I wasn't eating. Um, I was just sick. I was missing work. Um, I, I think I lived on popsicles for a few weeks, popsicles and crackers, because I just couldn't keep anything down. And so physically, I was drained, as well as mentally, I was drained, because I was physically drained. I'm, I'm just so, I'm grateful to be able to sit with you all going through this, because I didn't know, I knew that you would text me, Bishop, pray for me, blah, blah. But just to know that you were going through all of this and not one Sunday or not one weekend, do this voice sound familiar to y'all? Not one week did you call me and, or text me and say, Bishop, get somebody else to do the announcements. I'm not feeling it. You stayed on this. I mean, you did the announcements and you were energetic. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to. Pause for a moment. No matter how you were feeling now hearing this, you you were, I mean, you didn't let me down. You know your assignment here. You work behind the scenes, but you're doing a great job doing that. But just to know you were going through all that and still were doing ministry. And you know I am. I'm calling on you, getting ideas, you know, things of that nature. So I, I'm just... How people will give up when they're going through. This is a living testimony right before us. That we don't give up. Amen. Even though we may not be feeling it. And I know that we have different illness in the body. But she kept doing her assignment. Now I remember one text. I remember one text out of all this. I said to you. I said, Sister Amber. I said, God told me to tell you. You going through this process is going to be an encouragement to the other family. I said, you're going to build their faith. Yep. Their faith is not on your, the level right now, but I said, but God is going to allow you to build their faith. How did that transpire in your relationship? You know, in our relationship with the parents? Yeah. yeah. So, me, you know, me and hubby, we definitely, anytime we talk with them, 
you know, we definitely were trying to build their faith and just saying, like, we're believing this because their language was, if it happens, you know, it could happen, it may not happen. You know, we were like, no, this is definitely happening. Oh, this, the Lord's already got this. He's already working this out. And we were, we were manifesting and believing God. And by the end of that, they were believing God. And it was like they started talking faith, you know, and we were like, all right, y'all on the same page we on, let's go, you know. Um, we were all in, on the same faith walk because, you know, I would tell anybody, surrogacy was very much a faith walk for us. Um, and it was a faith walk for them as well because they had no idea. They were new to the list, and it was, it was nothing but God because they got on the list two months prior to me, this, you know, going through the process to become a surrogate. And they were told to expect at least a year and a half wait before they could they would be matched with a surrogate and they were they were just gonna get their ducks in the row and get themselves prepared for surrogacy and then to say hey two months later we got a possible match for you they weren't prepared for that um and they were shocked but they were excited to to make it happen and you know they got it together and they were able to um we were able to connect but man they 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 didn't know we were all blind on some things they didn't know what to expect they had never gone through that before so we were all walking this journey together you know it was just new to all of us and so we definitely had to have faith and we needed them to have faith for themselves um that the lord would do it for them and so it was definitely very much faith talking you know and hey we're going we're going to believe and we're going to manifest this thing and so by the end of it it was just it was so magical and just amazing to hear them say oh, you know, yes, God did it, you know. And I'm like, yes, he did. You know, he did that thing, you know. So um, it definitely was, it was, it was amazing to, to be on that faith journey with them. And, and to add, I would like to applaud Mike and Ashley because they could have quit at any time. Yeah. You know, so let's give them, they could have quit at any time. They could have been like, oh, forget this. You yeah. Know, especially, you know, them had I having faith, they could have been like, look, this is too much money, we're done. Yeah. But they didn't, mm -hmm. you know, so. Mike and Ashley. M Mike and Ashley. Okay, mm -hmm. we applaud them. Come on, clap yeah. your hands for Mike and Ashley. I, I want to read something, then we're going to uh, bring some breaking news. Okay. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Y'all got to prepare for this one, though. But anyway, let me read something. I don't know if our media team have it on. For, uh, 1 Corinthians 12, um, 27. It said, now you are the body of Christ and members in particular. And God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondary, uh, thank you, amen, second, they go to verse 28, amen, secondary uh, prophets, thirdly, teachers, after that miracles, then the gifts of healing helps. Y'all know that's a gift, the gift of healings and helps, government, diversities, of tongues are all apostles are all prophets are all teachers are all workers of miracles we have have all the gifts of healing do all speak in tongues do all interpret but covet earnestly the best gift and you show unto and and in ye and yet show i unto you a more excellent way so she god is saying that you're so y'all are operating in the gifts of um, helps and it brought forth healing because this family had been denied five times or failed at trying to do this five times now for five years before you came along five years now I gotta set this up gotta gotta might almost want a drum roll but I ain't gonna ask for one gotta set this up so Sam you you are Carrying this embryo, you're pregnant, and all of a sudden you get a call. No, actually, I got a text. I was oh, at, a text. Okay. I was at work, and um, you know, about this point, I'm. We were eight weeks along um, in the pregnancy, and I got this text, and it was a pregnancy test. And at first, I thought it was one of my friends. I'm thinking, what in the world? So I open it and see who the sender is, and it's Ashley, and she says, "I'm pregnant." Come on, help us out, media. Put the the guest they were the so, the family that she that has been thank you, put it on. The family that's been trying five years. 
Y'all see this miracle? What I just talked about, this miracle taking place. After five, now all of a sudden, she's pregnant. What are the odds? Glory to God. Now we got, now y'all, the men got a different conversation. <laughs> both of our women, both of our wives pregnant. So, so with that being said, my God, how did, what did, what did it do for y'all family? What did? We were so excited. So excited. I, I mean, I, I screamed. I was at work and I screamed and everybody was looking at me like, what is going on? And I'm like, Ashley's pregnant. You know, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't believe it, you know. Yeah. And I guess I shouldn't have been shocked because I remember you saying that. What are yes. they going to do when they get pregnant? And I'm thinking, well, what two babies? And yeah. I was like. I thought, what an odd question that Bishop just asked me. What? They're going to be happy. What? I mean, what else they going to be? They're going to have two babies. But I never, I didn't think about your question in that regard. But when she texted that and I saw it, I just screamed. I just couldn't believe I was running around showing everybody. I call her and she's just like, I can't believe this. Like, I'm so excited. And I was like, girl, that's nothing but God. I yes, mean, nothing yes. but God. What a miracle. And so we got to walk a pregnancy journey together, yes. you know? Oh, yep. Man. I got, I got the text, yes. <laughs> I got the text. She sent me a text message. I was in class. I don't know what I was doing this particular time, but uh, when I got the text and I saw that, I was like, what? Real loud in class. My student was like, Coach, you good? I was like, no, I'm fine. And I just couldn't believe it. Mm -hmm. you know. And uh, But when I saw that, you know, my heart just filled with joy. I was like, wow. I said, there's nothing but God there. Mm -hmm. you know? So it, it was awesome. It mm -hmm. was awesome. Wow. And, and and that was the dynamic. I remember we had the conversation through text, and I was say, I remember I said, "Was the same." Sometimes, you know, God would do miracles. We experienced it, you know, in a way. But but I was saying, you know, for some reason, I kept seeing this other baby, and I, I wasn't saying you're gonna go through it two times, but I just kept seeing this other baby, and I, I mentioned it to you. I said, "What happened?" So y'all excited about her pregnancy, and so now. Y'all got to prep them for another baby that they're going to get, you know. Not only are you going to have a baby at the hospital, but we're going to bring you a package too. Mm -hmm. So yes. how are you preparing the other family for that? You know, they were, they had a, they have tons of support. They've got their family around them. So they were, they were gearing up. It was like, oh my gosh, we're going to have two babies. And so they had to get two cribs, two everything, wow. you know, so they were, they were in full throttle preparation. Um, I think it took them a little second to kind of get it wrapped around their minds that they wow. were going to have two babies to prepare for, but they got excited and they sent me pictures of the nursery and, yeah. you know, the things they were buying and she would ask me pregnancy, pregnancy questions. It was nothing, you know, uncommon for her to send me a text to the day that says, well, what did you do about this? Or what do you think about this? You know, and um, those were good moments that we could share. Or I'd be like, well, let me call you whenever I get off work because I got to tell you about such and such. <laughs> and to be able to share what I was going right. through and what their baby was doing. Um, and then for her to be able to tell me what she was experiencing and ask me questions about motherhood and just pregnancy in general. So that was, it was a bonding moment for us, for sure. So, so, so Stan, Brother Shepherd, Deacon Shepherd, I'm sorry. So fast forward, <laughs> fast forward. You have the baby, you see the baby, but you, it always reminds me of that scene of the color purple. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. I got to didactically bring this to kids. You know the story to convert the girl, have the baby, then all of a sudden her dad come in there. But I tell nobody but God, you know. <laughs> he takes the baby away. So now you you go through this process. You birth the baby because you didn't, you didn't, you, you went through the birthing. Mm -hmm. and, and you hold the baby and you realize, I got to got to let this baby go. So what, how, explain that, I mean, just that it, moment. Um, I think you're, hormonally, I was just so overjoyed that the baby was here. She was healthy. I was healthy, and we didn't have any complications. And just to see the looks on their faces, they were so happy. I, I'm telling you, there is nothing that compares to that moment and being in that room with the four of us and this baby and just even the nurses and the doctor and everybody's just so they're just excited about your journey and just, you know, that you did this and to be able to do this and for them to say, I've never seen this before. This is never, I've never been experienced something like this. It was a moment, but then to know that 
now I gotta, you know, I gotta give this baby, this is their baby, and I've gotta hand it over, and they're gonna leave at some point. I think that was the hardest part of it was knowing that they were gonna leave, and I wasn't gonna get to spend much more time than I had with them. Um, and that baby, she knew Odette knew our voice, um, you know, and we would talk, and she would turn her head. I remember one moment I was holding her. And, you know, hubby was standing across the room, and he said something, and she turned her head to find his voice. And it was at that moment I thought, wow, she, you know, you know babies know your voice, but she's like, she knows our voices. And so that was just, it was a moment even then holding her. And then when they got ready to leave, you know, we got teary-eyed. They came to the house and said their goodbyes, and um, we had dinner and stuff. And seeing them leave and pull out of the driveway, that was that was hard, you know, not given, get, you know, because I, I equate it like this. The baby was almost like you're borrowing something. You know, it's never yours. You're just holding on to it for a short time. And that's how I equated the pregnancy. You know, it's like you go in with the condition in your mind that this baby doesn't belong to you. You know, you're just carrying this life for them. And then for them to, and then you see Ashley and she's pregnant and all of that. So you know that you know, they're coming together as a family, and they're going to be a family of four soon. You're excited for them, but it definitely was hard to see them leave because it's like a part of me wanted to have more time with them and the baby um, before they went home. But, you know, it, it worked out the way it was supposed to, and that, you know, our time was over, and I think that was the hardest thing for me to accept. It's like you spend so much time anticipating and praying and covering for them and covering the baby in prayer and, you know, having that, you know, that pregnancy time that it was like, what's next? I think that was the hardest pill for me to swallow. It's like, well, what do I do now? I spent all this time preparing and being pregnant, and now the baby's here, and we've made it to this moment, and now it's over. So that, that was a mental battle and a mental struggle for me. Um, and then for them to leave on top of that, that was, that was tough. Dad, I mean, Deacon, <laughs> it, it was tough uh, because I was fine through the whole process. Uh, Dad was here. <laughs> and I think, like I said, when they were leaving, I, I remember. I remember asking her, "Leaving today? Like they're right. gonna be gone?" Right. She said, "Yeah, they're leaving." I said, "Oh, mm-hmm. I, I thought." And I, and it hit me. I was like, "Well, we're, they're, not, they're gonna be gone, you know." So yes, it's very emotional, uh, you know, to see you know it's going through that whole ordeal with her, that process, man. You know, even though it has ups and downs, it was everything was awesome about it. Everything was great. Uh, in that moment with them leaving, uh, I think it really hit us, you know, and we were like, well, they're gone now, you know. And, and like she said, okay, what do we do now? And it was different. It was different, you know. They were gone. You know, now it's us again, you know, mm-hmm. our family, you know. And it, we go with the flow type of family, but it was different because now we don't have, you know, Odette is not here. Uh, she wasn't pregnant anymore. And now we have to go through this postpartum thing of pregnancy, you know, and it was different. You know, yeah. it was, it, we had to adjust again. We had right. to, you know, kind of hit the reset button. Yeah, you know, find so, our new normal. Yes, yeah. find a new normal. Uh, mm-hmm. and, wow. And I remember uh, Mike asking me in the hospital, hey, man, uh, now you, you have a successful guy, you know, good dude asking me, <laughs> what I do? How do I be a dad? <laughs> I said, I think I had to prepare something that you asked me. And I was like, man, you don't. I said, man, the baby's here. I said, you guys will be fine. I said, you just go with the flow. Right. You know, you would know how to take care of this baby, you know. And I remember that moment and we had, you know, and I think they were all across the room and he asked me that. And, and I remember that. I said, hey, man, you don't. You just you just take care of yourself. You would know what to do right. uh, when you're taking care of your, your kids. I said, so just go with the flow. I said, we're here. We're phone call away, you know, so. Just to, you guys are going to be fine, you know. So uh, I remember wow. that. Yeah. Awesome, my goodness. Um, I know I'm wrong, but we we we're at that time. But uh, what was the, the little girl name? Oh, Odette. Odette. Yeah. Amen. And we have we have a few pictures of her. I mean, we just uh, we get we did get permissions from the parents, and you get just go through a few of the pictures, media team, and just. Uh, there she is, first newborn. She's how old now? Eight months. Eight months. And watch this, y'all. She's all she gets. She's just a big. <laughs> that picture gets me. I don't know what it is about that picture. Like, pick me up, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> like I got one of my kids. I'm like, oh, bring a 
you back. <laughs> wow, come on, let's applaud this family, amen, for what they did, for the ministry that they did. <clears throat> and, and, and out of all of that, you know that you went through this, but God, God has blessed the shepherds. Yes. He has been a tremendous blessing to, to the shepherds, y'all, you know. And, and, and the, on top of this, Sister Amber, yeah, it would sound like Sister Amber is, is spoiled, but she's not. She's lovely. I was protecting her. I was, you know, I was like, Sister Amber, you know, you don't have to do so. But Sister Amber called me, hey, Bishop, we go and look for a house during a pregnancy, Sister Amber. 10 out of 10 don't recommend doing that. <laughs> I wish you would have stopped me and said, don't do it. I said, Sister don't Amber, are y'all sure? Yes. Sir. <laughs> Maybe you need to wait, you know, and I, I kind of alluded to her. I didn't want to break she was geared she was oh, ready was she ready. was and I was, I was in my, my my mind I was like maybe she need to wait you know and things of that nature but God bless you all with a new home yes. amen come on y'all amen he bless he bless you all with a uh, a nice home he bless you all amen um so there are other blessings I mean y'all just testify about your blessing amen Did you, before we got pregnant, you got the head coaching job at Sagster. Oh, head coach. Mm -hmm. Glory yeah. to God. Yeah, he walked into that interview and he knocked it out and he got that job. And then we were going through the process and the Lord was opening the doors for surrogacy. It just seemed like everything was just running so smoothly and we were connected with, you know, the family and everything went well. And in the process, we were looking for a home and. You know, we had our hearts set on one house, and it just seemed like every obstacle that could come up was coming up. And my feelings were crushed because I wanted this house so bad. And um, I remember telling you about it, calling you, Bishop, I really want this house. I don't, you know, I really, I, we really want to move forward with this, but the seller is just, she just wasn't willing to compromise or negotiate with us. And so we had to walk away from that one, and it just seemed like every house we looked at from that point on, it just didn't didn't pan out, you know, we would offer over asking, they still would say no, you know, it was just little things like that, and it just seemed like, you know, it wasn't the time, and then the minute we, we said we were going to stop looking because it just wasn't right, um, that's when um, I actually had a dream about the house, I saw this house in a dream, and then I would say within the next two weeks, um, I, it popped up, and it was just seemed like out of nowhere, and I was the first one to look at the house, I remember leaving work, and I called him, I said, I'm on my way to this house to go look at it, I said, it just came out of nowhere. And I went in, and I thought, this is the house that I saw in the dream. And um, I turned to our agent, and I said, I'm ready. And she was like, you ready to leave? And I said, no, I'm ready to offer. Let's, let's move forward. I'm ready to go, you know. And um, he accepted our offer immediately. Nobody else got to see the house. And we got to we got to buy it and we closed and so the report is you all have the house, mm -hmm. amen. They have been blessed with such a one, and and it would be that Deacon would send me pictures of of the house, amen. We have a, a photo of the house, amen. Just to, just to let you know that God blessed them, amen. Y'all see his little grass. <laughs> I ask questions, he tell me, and I just try to apply. <laughs> <laughs> he can send me the bed. I say, I see your little grass. <laughs> Amen. But we, not only that, but recently, something big has happened for you, yes. Sister Amber. Yes. Amen. Uh, what happened? Um, so, my, my boss came at the beginning of the year, and I remember um, I was journaling on January 1st, and I wrote the year of the the open door and I just I told him I said I just really feel like God is getting ready to do some big things I don't know what it is but I just feel like some doors are gonna open you know and I get back from vacation and my boss said I need to talk to you and I was like okay and I went in her office and she goes I'm gonna step down from my position she's like me and my husband are gonna sell our house and we're gonna uh, we're gonna move to our property um, out in the country on the river and I was like what does that mean and she was like that means you need to apply for my job Wow. And at first I toyed with it. I was like, I don't know. And, and husband and, and my mom were like, girl, you'd be crazy not to. Go for it. And I did. And, and I got the position of regional retail manager. Hold up, y'all. Hold up. Amen. Can we celebrate Sister Amber? Congratulations. You're the regional retail Amen. We celebrate her success. Come on. Amen. Oh, y'all ain't making no noise. Come on, celebrate it. 
Amen. So we congratulate you and we congratulate not only that, amen, but I got some news this weekend about Deacon uh, Shepherd. You you mind sharing some information? God just been yeah. blessing y'all. Amen. Yes. We, I, I, I well, don't know about uh, the doing the sacred, but I want the blessings. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. I was just sitting, you know, at school, you know, in my classroom and I get this text message from one of my colleagues. And, uh, you know, and he said, hey, you know, uh, you know, he wanted me to send you this message because, you know, you were one of the coaches that's nominated for Impact Coach of the Year. Wow. And so I didn't know, I didn't know where it come from. I was like, whoa, you know, and so I said, this is awesome. You know, I'm very humble about it, but I'm like, this is pretty awesome. So I was talking to uh, one of my coaches yesterday and uh, he said, like, man, that's big. He said, I won it two years ago. And he said, this is really big. He said, congratulations. I was like, oh, okay. You know, so I'm, I don't know how big this thing is, but to be nominated, and I know it's probably going to be some good coaches uh, that nominated in this uh, category. I said, but I was feel blessed to be nominated for this. Uh, yes. And, because there's, you know, with coaching, you know, there's up and downs, uh, you know, to coaching. And, uh, you know, you go through, you pray, you, <laughs> you know, you, you go to a point where you're like, hey, am I supposed to be doing this? And, and out the blue, I get this text message of, uh, you know, of this this uh, this information. And, you know, and it was just God telling me, hey, you know, I got you. you you're doing what you're supposed to do. So I appreciated that. So, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So, so how, how do, I mean, how do you get voted as the impact? So, yeah. Uh, Impact Coach of the Year deals with, uh, you know, on and off the court. You know, not only coaching on the court, but off the court, uh, with your players impacting, uh, you know, players you know, about God, the walk with God, and, uh, right. you know, and, and things like that. So I guess somebody saw something in me uh, to nominate me for this uh, award, and I'm grateful for it, and I'm thankful for it. So, yeah, you definitely impact on and off the court. Uh, and, of course, we put God first. I put God first, and uh, – and, yes. and, and and I'm not going to say this just because she's here, but I really do appreciate one of my players being here. You guys know Faith is one of my players, and yes, and and I heard of her. Yeah, <laughs> and it blesses my she heart right. <laughs> that she's around. Yeah, you know because you know, and she see you know everything that happens with the team, with the coaches, and in her walk and her journey with God right now. It's like wow. with her being there, we connect at a different level. You know, wow. and, I, and, I, and I like that. I love that, and uh, and I appreciate her for what she's doing. You know, wow. so uh, and but I'm telling you, man, it's 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 uh, it's, it's amazing. And, and I will talk to you after we church faith over some things. But yes, I appreciate her and this award. You know, been impactful to you know your players on and off the court about your walk with God, about you know uh, your faith and you know praying and things like that. So somebody saw something, you know, and. Uh, I appreciate that, and I'm grateful for it. Awesome. Uh, so, so how do we do we vote, or or we just so next week about this time? I think it's at 6 p.m. We wanna we wanna show up at the mining convention center to let them know, hey, we up in here. We support our nominated coach of the year, uh, Deacon Von Shepherd. But I, I want to start. I'm gonna pause. Thank you. Uh, Deacon Shepherd, thank you, Sister Amber, for sharing. Your, come on, y'all. Then we enjoy this moment. I want to. I want to thank you for sharing the story. As much we're going to share this with different people. I believe this is a help to other people that may not be doing surrogacy, but doing ministry outside of the wall, and just knowing that sometimes doing ministry there's failure. Sometimes it doesn't work like we want it to, but having that right team, you know, having that right support. And that, and that was one of the things I was going to ask is like, how did the church play a part in your role? You know, what role did the church pr play in this, in this process? You know, and I think that that part of is sustaining faith, you know, making sure that you're in the right place, you're in a healthy place where Ministry is not only are you ministered to, I mean, not only are you doing ministry, but you're being ministered to. Amen. So I really want to applaud y'all uh, for what the assignments 
you all have done. Uh, I want to do this because we're out of we know time is well spent. Thank you all for hanging around with us. Amen. If you, if you, if you, I'm, I'm going to try to take at least two questions. Amen. Two questions. If you have a question, amen, let's get them a mic expeditiously. Amen. We, we have two men. Oh, Jesus. Glory to God. No, Dickie, you wait. Glory to God. Come on. Come on, Brother Clyde. Amen. We want to, come on, quickly, we're going to ask them a question uh, how many of you really enjoyed this? Come on, lay. How many of you glad this happened? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, uh, I was just curious. Uh, number one, I had two questions. How do your kids accept the baby? Um, and do you and do they spend any time around the baby? Well, the the family lives in New York, so we don't get to see them. So once they once they left, um, that was that was it. Um, we just see them through Zoom and, and things like that. But the the kids know that um, they just they think of her as just Odette. You know, she she was in my belly and we carried her and they know Mike and Ashley. So at this point, they're family to us. They're just extended family. Yep. Well, uh, another next question is, uh, were you attached to the baby when it left? Um, How did it bother you? I think hormonally, um, it'd almost be impossible not to be, but after the fact, after I get back home to my kids and my family and my surroundings and my environment, you know, it, after my hormones kind of settled down, I was, I was pretty good mentally there. Um, I didn't feel a strong sense of attachment. Everybody asks me, what do I, how do I feel? And I think the best way I can equate that is I feel like a proud aunt, you know, yep. She's not mine, um, but she's a part of me. So that's kind of how I revere her as, you know, as a proud aunt. And, you know, she, and I still say, that's my baby. You know, I call her my baby, but yes. um, I don't have a strong sense of attachment in a motherly way, but, you know, but a familial way. Hey, that was very godly of you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Amen. All right. Next question. Got to be in line with what's going on, Deacon. <laughs> Hey man, let's receive the thank you can heal. Well, this is not my question, but Faith wanted to know, would y'all do it again? Um, and I've been asked that several times. If the Lord led me to do it, um, I definitely would do it again. Um, it was a, an amazing experience. And, you know, even though it was a sacrifice and all of that, um, it still was amazing. And I definitely... I would love the opportunity. I don't feel like that's where the Lord is leading me right now, especially with taking on a promotion at work and things like that. But if he if he opened the door, I'd walk there in for sure. Um, to add to, I really do think uh, that we were put on this earth to bless that family. Mm -hmm. Wow. So uh, wow. I'm not saying that Wait, we won't. Make that statement again. Yes. That's, that's I, powerful. Come I, on, I, see. I, I, I think that we were put on this earth to bless that particular family with this blessing uh, because I'm not saying we won't do it again because it's up to her, but it's up to God. But the way I feel, I feel we were put here to bless Mike and Ashley and that, you know, and that particular family, because I don't think anybody else could have did that for them. Wow. You know, uh, so, wow. Yeah. Wow. Absolutely. My, that, that is amazing. Any, no more questions. Praise. Are you, did anybody have their, they have a question online? Okay, I guess not. Amen. But we're, we're so thankful. Uh, uh, I think the baby is trying to let us know she's glad about this interview as well. So, but we're, we're grateful. Let us applaud, applaud the shepherds one more time on what God did through them. Amen. We want to thank God for our deacons. We want to thank God for everybody in place. This is what I want to do. I want us to, I want us to think about, because this was my assignment today, was to talk about ministry outside of the walls. And you may be in here and you're all watching online and you're wondering, do my ministry count? If it's done outside, inside or outside of the church, it counts. But ministry, what I do on Sunday morning is only a small percentage of what I do throughout the week. Y'all hear me? So me being up here preaching for the, you know, for the, you know, for the time I up here preach, whatever, the five minutes y'all give me, that's a small portion of my ministry. Uh, being outside into the community. I said something to somebody 
I said something to the group of guys last night. I said, my ministry doesn't need my title. Ministry needs my time. Ministry doesn't need my title. It needs my time. Because I can have the title, but not taking out the time. And so I said, this is the hour. This is where I am right now. I'm going to spend time in those places doing ministry that other places, other people want to spend time in. And so, like Sister Amber gave her body, Deacon Shepherd gave his service because he became a servant to his wife that gave her body to help another family. That is a tag team. Come on, somebody. So you might not understand their level of ministry in that, but it was ministry for another family. They have a story. The other family has a story. You know, so ministry is about pulling somebody out of a situation, empowering them when they can't do it for themselves. I need you to do something very quickly. Look at somebody. Say, neighbor, I pray my ministry help you. Yeah, tell that. Come on, tell somebody. I pray that my ministry help you. I pray that I'm able to help you. Amen. Glory to God. Let come on. Get before we go. Did y'all have final final remarks? Final. Um, I just I want to say publicly, and I know that you and I have talked over our morning coffee about what God has done in our lives and just all that He's blessed us with. But I want to say publicly to you. I can never repay you for all that you did through the journey and all the sacrifice. And y'all, we went through it. You know, I know this seems really glamorous, but we were talked about. People ridiculed us. People, we see people in the grocery store and they go the other way. I mean, we went through it. Um, and we had to be mentally strong to handle that. And I couldn't have done that without your support. I couldn't have done that without you holding down the house and taking care of me and being there to encourage me and lift me up. I couldn't have done it without you. And we built a, a life of an even deeper level of togetherness through this and a deeper level of intimate time with God and just all the benefits and all of the, all the reward and all of that. It just brought me so much great joy to my life. And I love you. And I, and I just I can't tell you how much I love you and how much I respect you and how much I know who Amber is because of you and how much you have pushed me to step out there and step out of the boat even when it was uncomfortable and I appreciate you being a role model and I appreciate you and I respect you and I love you. You back Hercules. <laughs> Find a remark. My goodness, that was awesome. I'm not. I'm already. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, baby. Amen. I love you for being a strong woman, woman of God. I love you for sacrificing for not just for me, but just for sacrificing yourself for, you know, everybody that comes in your presence. Uh, you know, and I, I I just thank you for that. Uh, for being a great mother, uh, to our kids, a great wife to me. Uh, you know, it feels good not uh knowing that you know you don't i don't have a wife that hey i always have to look what are you doing what are you no we don't have that you know and we, we genuine love uh we tell people uh what you see here so what we what you see what we what you see at home you know we, we wow. don't put on a show for anybody uh like i said we just go with the flow you know and i'm a kid at heart so i know i get on her nerves sometimes uh, with me with the kids now we have you know a four-legged uh <laughs> friend in the house as well so uh but she put up with us and and she's a very strong woman a great woman of god and i know god has more for her uh, i can see her uh going higher and higher uh in the lord in her walk and you know and i'm gonna be her number one fan i love you uh for everything you do baby right. wow that's a love story and a blessing. Amen. Let's thank God for the shepherds one more time. Let's thank God for them. Um, I'm going to do this. Amen. Um, I ask you all.
who would be willing to go through this process and none of y'all didn't raise your hand none of you all they didn't know I wanted to do this but I want to do something special for the shepherds because their testimony blessed me their, their story blessed me and I want you all to help me in this effort I want to send them I want to do something for them to just go and I can feel the romance up here I'm all I'm trying to slide out the way but I got to stay here but I, I, I want to sing you all I want to sing you be able to sing you all for just just a weekend for y'all because this is because we are rewarded for ministry but we want as a church to reward you all for a weekend you know of course you got to be back for Sunday but, but just no just mess with you. but I really want to do something for the shepherds they, they could have heard and say Bishop I don't want to share this story with you I don't want to share it with the public but it helped did it help anybody today did it help anybody and so we, we want to do something special we want to send them on a weekend probably whatever y'all choose send you off and let you just enjoy each other. No kids. No kids. I'm sorry, Alea. No kids. Alexa, I know you're going to get on me. No kids. But just you all alone. Don't they deserve it? Come on. Don't they deserve Come on, y'all. I need some help in here. Don't they deserve it? So, so I, I know, I know we're getting ready to leave and we're getting ready to uh, cut off, but I'm going to, I'm going to put the basket down here or you can, if, if this bless you, cause this, as we bring in ministers to sow, I mean, to give us a word, we bless them. If this bless you, because it surely bless me, I want to sow into their lives. Amen. They have a strong church family. Come on, somebody. I said they have a strong church family. And so I want to, I want to, if you're giving on cash app, just put the shepherds, don't, amen. Uh, put the shepherd family or give, or put the, uh, yeah, just put the shepherds, glory to God. Or, amen, if you're giving in the house, we're coming from wherever you are. We're coming, we're giving, we're sowing into them. We want to love on them. Come on, we're loving on them. Amen. We're sowing on in their lives <clears throat> that they won't have to worry. They'll be able to go and enjoy themselves. Amen. Is that your mother? Amen. We want to thank God for mom being here. Amen. Mother being here. The sister Amber's mom is in the house, y'all. Amen. We want to thank God for it. Come on, clap for her. Clap for her. Amen. Amen. I'm so, you want to come and hug mom and dad, or you just that's one of the daughters. Amen. Hallelujah. But we're sowing, you're watching live, and we just wanted to bring ministry to you in a different way. We're standing all over the building. We're standing all over the building. Now, if you're here and you said, Bishop, I want to be saved, I don't want to leave this building without giving my life to Christ. If that's you, you say, I want to be saved. I want to be saved hallelujah i want to be saved i understand we do ministry different sometimes and sometimes we have to sit back and just say you know let's 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 hear somebody testimony let's hear somebody testimony or you're here today and you say you know what i gotta join this church hallelujah if that's you you say i gotta join this church i want to be a part of this church if i want to be a part of this church you're viewing us online amen we love you we thank god for you amen if that just you know you just you just know you want to be a part of what god is doing oh he's coming to join okay hallelujah amen glory to god he's coming to join on today amen we have time for that glory to god hallelujah amen hallelujah another man coming into the ministry amen another man coming into the ministry amen i'm just going to ask you a, a few questions amen and we're, we're going to go from there glory to god amen 
Thank you, Mother Glory. Amen. She's good? Okay. All right. Hallelujah. Uh, Terry, uh, as a member of this church, we pray you're going to obey. Oh, come on. Amen. Jump on in. Hallelujah. Amen. Hey, a family coming in. As, as members of this church, as members of this church, you, you want, you're going to, you promise to obey the word of the Lord. Amen. You promise to follow where my wife went. Glory to God. You promise to ob- follow leadership as we follow Christ. Amen. You promise you would give as God give it unto you. And amen. Uh, you promise you would love these wonderful people. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, by the power of the power invested in me and my lovely wife in this wonderful church we want to welcome you to the best family that's the purple church come on y'all come on make some noise in this house amen we want to welcome we want to welcome you thank you for choosing new direction come on y'all let's love on them god bless you man mississippi is in the house y'all amen Mississippi is here. Hallelujah. We're standing all over the building. We're standing all over the building. Hallelujah. Shortly after we dismiss, we're going to meet with our auxiliaries. It, it, it won't be long. Glory to God. And we thank God on today. We thank God for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Let's clap our hands. If you, amen. You're in the building. You know that God is so God. God is so God and we thank him for everything that he has done father we thank you for this day we thank you for who you are what you are to us now God as we depart from this place we thank you for the shepherd family we thank you for the family that they were able to be a blessing to God I pray that those that view this moment of testament God a testimony that they would sense God your presence and your approval on everything that you're doing in this moment now god as we depart from this place but never from your presence that you will keep us and guide us thank you for your grace thank you for your mercy in jesus name we pray thank you for the new family that has joined this church god we thank you for that god and for what you're going to do and we'll forever give you the glory, God. We'll forever give you the praise. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Love on somebody before you leave. Tell them I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. Love on somebody.